Welcome to the Data Hall YouTube channel. In our today's lecture, we are going to talk about how do we combine different vectors or if there is a vector and we need to add that vector into a data frame, how do we do that? So let's start with the, uh, the first idea of combining columns or combining different vectors. Uh, so let's just say if we have this vector by the name of F name, which stands for first name, and then we have last name. So we have different players. We have three players over here and we have two different vectors. If I press control enter, we would see that we have two vectors over here. Each vector is a character vector having three different, um, elements with, within them. And if I click over here, I would see that we have three different elements within this last name and then we have three different elements within this first name. So let's just say if I wanted to combine this information into a single matrix, how do I do that? Right? Uh, the function that we use is called C bind, which stands for column bind. Uh, so, uh, so, so the syntax is simple. We write the function and then the name of the vectors that we need to combine. And if we want them to be saved into an object, then we would give the name of the object and save that, um, the result of this, this function into that object. So let me execute this by pressing control enter. And you would see that we have this mattress over here and this mattress contain the first name and the last name. So we have matrix now instead of each individual vector. Uh, if we wanted to combine these uh, in rows, then we would use R bind, which stands for row bind. So again, the idea is similar. The syntax is the same. We write the function R bind and specify the vectors that we need to combine. Uh, press control enter and we get our uh, R bind, right? So this is now uh, combined as rows. So first row would be the first vector and the second row would be the second vector. Okay. Uh, so, so that was a simple idea, but we can also combine a data frames. So if we had two data frames and if we wanted to combine them, we could easily use C bind or R bind and give the name of those data frames. Uh, but that can be done with uh, other methods or it is easy to use. I'm not going to demonstrate them. Uh, what if you had a vector and you wanted it to be added to a data frame? So let's create a data frame. So here we are going to create a data frame that would contain the first name and the last name. So we'd have two columns. Uh, this would be the first column, which would be the first name. And then we would have the second column, which would be the last name of players, we are going to take both of these columns and uh, make a data frame out of it. This is what this function would do here. Uh, right? So we have this data frame. And then we take this whole function, the result of this whole function, and save it as an object. Um, we would give it a name as basketball because these are basketball players, right? So let's press control enter and we get our, uh, our data frame, right? We have the names over here, uh, right? Okay. So we have the names over here of the columns and then, uh, the data that we have, uh, we would have first name and the last name. Now we also have these players, uh, ages, right? Uh, so we have three players. Stephen Curry, Chris Paul, and Derek Rose, and we have their ages, right? But this age is a vector. If I press Control Enter, I see that we get a wage. Uh, I we get an age vector. Now, if we wanted to add this data in our current data frame, uh, so what we need to do is uh, we need to have a column over here which would say age and then each uh, row would contain the relevant age. So the first row would contain 32 and so on and so forth. And now remember whenever we are using C bind or I bind, we are uh, not merging them on the basis of certain ID, 
right? So there is a unique identifier within both these data set. And if you were doing that, then that would be what we call merge. But we do not have a unique identifier over here. Uh, so, so we do C bind because we need to create a column. We need to combine a column over here. So we know that we're going to use the C bind function. And what would be parameters of it? So first we would give it the data frame basketball. And uh, then we would give it uh, the vector age. And I can save it in any new object, right? So we get our first name, last name, and the vector age. Or I can simply override this uh, basketball matrix, which is over here. We just have two columns. But if I press Control Enter, we would override it. And we would have now three uh, three columns, right? Okay. So that was adding a vector to a data frame. Uh, what if we had multiple vectors or data frames? Uh, so for example, we already have these two vectors, F name and L name. And then we have this vector age, right? We see these vectors over here. We want to combine them all. So we use say we want to co make columns out of them. We need three columns. So we just obviously use the C bind and give the name of the vectors. So we can use multiple vectors. It doesn't mean that we just have to use two parameters as we did previously. So we can use any number of parameters and that would create uh, this three vector, right? Uh, this object by the name of three vector. Now, you would see a subtle difference over here. We see these values and then we see uh, three different uh, objects over here. Now, these are vectors, right? They are not matrices because they just contain a single observation or uh, a single row or column of observation, right? Uh, a matrix would contain columns and as well as rows. A vector would just contain a row or a column. It would not be a row, a column. It would just be like... Uh, few observations of data. Uh, okay. But then over here we see uh, like basketball, this one and then uh, this one does give us exactly the same uh, output, but they have different internal structures. As you can see, we have an arrow over here. Uh, we get a different kinds of reading over here, uh, but the data is the same. Now, if we check the class of these three vectors, uh, we know that we have a matrix over here. So we do not get an arrow sign with the matrix. But if we look at the uh, class of this basketball object, we would see that we have a data frame. Why? Because we created a data frame basketball. Uh, so when you see an arrow, it is, a it is a data frame. And if there isn't an arrow, that is... Um, a matrix, or you can also use this class function to check whether it is a uh, data frame or a matrix. Now, the point is that we know that this three vector, this object is, uh, uh, this is not basically a vector, we just gave it a name as of a vector. So this is a matrix and we want to confirm, convert it into a data frame. So what do we do? We use as dot data dot frame function and we just specify the name of that matrix and let's override the current matrix right and 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 note over here you would see an arrow sign as as these data frames have uh, if i press control enter you would just see that the data would remain the same but its internal internal structure would change okay so let's move to another idea uh, and this is something that most of us uh, face difficulty in working with if you wanted to combine data frames of different length. So let us say over here we have this uh, football uh, data frame. It is uh, similar to this one, but this one was for the basketball pair. The players are different. And this data frame is for the football players. Right? So we have a basketball players and we have football players. But the difference is that we just have three individuals in basketball and we do have their ages information. But in football data frame, we just have, we have four players, but we do not have age column. So the idea is that now we have 
a different uh, length of data frames, right? So it is a four by two, and this one is three by three data frame. So when we get to combine these data frames that are of different length and we use this rbind function, what would happen? We use this rbind function and give it these two data frames. <clears throat> it would give us an error. And the error says that the number of columns of the argument do not match. So these two does not have the same length. What if we do C bind, right? That would also doesn't would not work because whenever there are different length, C bind and R bind uh, would fail. Uh, so let's uh, come to our uh, solution for this. Firstly, we'll discuss what do we do if we wanted to combine rows. And for that, we would use this dplyr library. We, if you need, we, if you haven't installed it, you would install it using install.packages and then write the name of the data, uh, write, write the name of the library. I have already installed it, so I'm not going to execute this line. I would comment that out and just execute the library uh, uh, code. Okay, so in dplyr, we have this bind underscore rows, and this is exactly similar to our bind. Uh, but the only uh, difference is that it would uh, combine rows of different uh, data frames of different lengths. So what should it do? We have a basketball, and then we have football. Uh, so let's look at this. We get this missing R bind, and you can see that uh, what it did is appended. It stacked. This was our uh, basketball players, uh, right? We had this basketball three players, and then we had football players, but football players didn't had the age data. So wherever there was no data for them, uh, it gave us a missing uh, value or an NA, which stands for um, it, which represents the missing value in R. So uh, the, the idea is that if the, the length is different, then to combine rows, we use bind underscore rows, which comes from dplyr, right? So I would just clean this, uh, right? Okay, and but if the, the columns are of different length and we need to combine them, then we can not use uh, something like that. What we need to use is then, uh, let me again uh, reload this data, this football data, and I just changed the name. So now in the basketball data, we have F name and L name, and in the football's data, we have F name foot and L name foot. And the reason is that what we want is we want to take this data and we want to add columns. So if the column names would be similar as we had previously, right? in the football and the basketball data frame, it would just stack them, append them, right? One over another. We do not want that. We want to combine the columns. We want the the basketball data over here, and then we want another two columns, which would represent the, 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 the football players. So uh, now what we do is that we, uh, we, 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 we create another column within each of these uh, data frames. And let's give it a name of row number. And what we do is we take these row numbers and get them into a column, right? So we have four uh, row numbers and then we get them into a separate column. And how do we do that? We create a column that would be given uh, the value of row names from the football column. And uh, so what we're doing, we are combining this vector and then this data frame and overriding our current data frame, which is football. So if we look at this now, then you can see that we have this uh, row, uh, this column over here, which represents the row number. Uh, we would do the same to the basketball data frame. So now what happens is that we have a unique identifier and what we can do is we can take these unique identifier and combine these data sets and get the column based on this unique identifier. So, so, so what would happen is that this first row uh, from the football would get matched to the first row of the, uh, the basketball. So we would get the Matthew Ryan uh, in front of Stephen Curry, right? 
So this is the idea. So we merge the we use the merge function which we have discussed in our previous video, uh, the football data frame and the basket data frame, and we set it uh, all equal to true. If you have watched my previous video, you would know what merge would do. So we have created this missing C bind, and you can see that uh, the data, uh, the columns are combined. Okay, the last idea is uh, we have worked with a different length data frames, but sometimes we have to work with different length vectors. So let's just say we had this uh, vector uh, age that had th three observations, and let me change that vector, and now we would have two observations. Uh, and we want to combine this uh, to uh, with with these two vectors. So we have first name, last name. They are three uh, three three observations, uh, both of them. And then we have this age, which is of length two. So what we do is we use this max function and take the length of each of this vector, right? and get the maximum length, save it, it into this object. Now, we the maximum length is 3. We know that because this age is of 2, uh, length 2, but first name and last name is of length 3. Now, what do we do is, this is where the magic happens, is that we assign the same length, right, this length 3, to each of our vector. So length of this vector is equal to three. So we press enter. Now all of our vectors are of length three. You can see that one column three and the last digit which was missing, uh, the last age which was missing would have a missing value. Now we just combine them because they are essentially of same, uh, same length. So we use C bind, specify the, the vector names and save them. So we get our this diff length matrix and we get uh, all the vectors combined. So I hope this video was useful. Do subscribe to this channel and do hit the bell icon.